protein, and we also analyze uh, the mutation rate of nucleocapsid protein. Because this is what we did, we want to develop a method, low cost method, so that the virus we can uh, identify with a very cost effective manner. Uh, uh, so, uh, because uh, the present uh, QPCR, uh, that is uh, very costly in Bangladesh, about in uh, private uh, medical uh, facilities, they took about 3,500 uh, taka. Uh, and even the government who supplied us the sum, uh, our the reagent, Sinovac reagent of Chinese, it, each test cost 2200 uh, taka. So we want to develop a cost effective uh, method, PCR method, UPCR, and normal PCR method. We use the cyber green based QPCR technique and we develop a, a melting curve based identification of this uh, virus. And it costs less than 200, uh, 200 taka in Bangladeshi taka. And we use uh, target gene, N and E, for the viral detection. And the, um, and, and the host uh, gene is the beta actin as an internal control. And then we start to work for a more less efficient method because for a QPCR, quantitative PCR method, uh, real-time PCR, we don't have in uh, we don't have in every laboratory. Then we go for a, a normal PCR. With every laboratory, every university, uh, I could, uh, as I know that they have their own. Uh, PCR, method, uh, PCR machines uh, because they want to teach the students and some of the uh, diagnostic center, they are also uh, using this PCR uh, machine for diagnostic purpose. Then we develop a PCR based, just normal PCR based technology, low, low cost. And this is a multiplex PCR. In one PCR, we can use the primer in such a way so that we can identify all the clears that are circulating in Bangladesh. With this technique, we can identify six, uh, uh, six clear except um, RV, uh, uh, GV clear because that one is, uh, we didn't find any clear in Bangladesh. Then we try to check how the virus are uh, transmitted from one to another. We use the currency, whether the, through the currency, um, can it be uh, transmitted from one person to another person. We found that the new, uh, new uh, bills, Bangladeshi bills, that are more uh, prone to uh, transfer virus from one person to another person. Another. But the old bill, they are better, they, they uh, transmit less amount of virus to one to another. And then we want to analyze actually what happening about in comorbidity. We know this virus is mostly mild. It, uh, it produces very mild, uh, mild flu and uh, uh, disease in the patient. But when it, it is very serious when it is, uh, we found the comorbid people. Then we analyzed for the diabetic uh, patient, what actually happened after infection, how the interaction, because we know nowadays it is very, uh, uh, we, uh, in all over, we, or for all the disease, we established that when a disease happened and the subsequent and steps, there is a big change in the host, whole host and host microbiomes, and the interaction and crosstalk between these microbiomes that ultimately leads the, uh, leads, uh, the degree of the disease. And that's why we analyze the host metastasis diagnosis 
uh, we took a, a, another uh, project uh, to analyze what actually happened, the total microbiome in the patient. We considered the diabetics, the patient, we, uh, uh, and we found that in diabetic patient, after COVID infection, the pathogenic bacteria, it increased. The opportunist pathogenic bacteria also increased. Normal, uh, norm, uh, normal flora and the uh, probiotic uh, bacteria that decrease. So ultimately, the total, our theory is that the increase of pathogenic bacteria and the opportunist bacteria that uh, load the immune system of the whole virus. So the innate immunity is compromised for the uh, COVID-19 that ultimately leads the complication of in the diabetic patients. Then we also try to uh, develop a protein-based uh, candidate for vaccine. We develop a chimeric protein and this protein, uh, we have also, uh, also published this paper. We have also published, uh, published, the, uh, published the paper. We have uh, also uh, published the paper in um, Journal of Medical Virology. And we are now, we have constructed the uh, construct and we are expressing the uh, protein and for actually what we can do, we, our main target is to develop and develop a ELISA based uh, kit for diagnosis of COVID-19. And there is another, you, we know, everybody know, uh, there is a dot blood test kit developed by the, um, with the, uh, this, uh, one group, Dr. Jafullah's group uh, in uh, his laboratory in Ganeshastha, and this is uh, well circulated in Bangladesh. And the, uh, thank you very much. And this is what actually all uh, the COVID research is going on in uh, just genome center. Uh, and this is the COVID team of Just Genome Center. In the first uh, figure, uh, this is the, all the faculties of Joshua uh, Science and Technology Microbiology Department, except two. Uh, one is in biomedical engineer, uh, uh, assistant professor, and another is uh, food and nutrition assistant professor. And the YOLO, oh, this is the people that they are working in the gene, gene sequencing. Uh, and uh, in the uh, safety cabinet, I'm, I'm sitting in front of the um, safety cabinet and uh, demonstrating the, uh, our students and the faculties uh, for how they can safely using biosafety <laughs> procedure can handle the COVID in the laboratory. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for patient sharing. For the happiness, joy Bangla, joy Bangabandhu, Bangladesh, Chirichubihu. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your presentation about the global pandemic situation and its effect on our life. We do really appreciate your participation and we are really happy to know about your published research paper about SARS-CoV-2, where you established low-cost methods as alternatives and metagenomic diagnosis system with pathogenic genetic network, network profile of the virus at Jeshire University of Science and Technology. That's really great to know that you found multi epitope vaccine candidate COVRMEN. That's really so, uh, very great news for us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, your skin share is on. Please kindly. Yeah. Okay. Thank now you, I would like to uh, uh, read some message from a chat box because one of our scientists uh, messaged, messaged us and I want to read it first. Uh, 
Professor Dr. A. H. Wani from Botani Department of University of Kashmir, he uh, said that best wishes to organizers, participants, and delegates. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for being with us. Now I would like to uh, request our plenary speaker, Professor Dr. Shubhumay Dato, Department of Microbiology, Prime Asia University, to share his message with us. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to give me the opportunity to present uh, my uh, research as a plenary speaker here. Actually, I am working on multi drug resistance pattern of pathogenic bacteria and, uh, and another project I am working on, on genetic diseases. So I want to present here regarding my research related to genetic diseases because you know COVID-19 also a genetic disease. That is, uh, that is, uh, uh, we, we know that that is started from the Wuhan city uh, market, uh, animal or fish market. Uh, it, it was uh, introduced last year. So uh, I also would like to present my uh, uh, research here uh, on migration of multi resistant genotic salmonella species and Campylobacter species from poultry to human and forecasting their multi resistant pattern on public health in Bangladesh perspective. Part of this work uh, I have al uh, already presented uh, in a uh, uh, last year before before pandemic and USA in the uh, American Applied uh, Microbiological Society as a plenary speaker in Maryland. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Please put your uh, PowerPoint presentation in full screen mode. It would be better. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's okay. Fine. It's fine now. Okay now, sir, it's okay now. The mute now, mute now. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Yes, sir. So at first we want to know what is the genetic diseases. You know, pathogenic bacteria when live in the animal, I mean uh, some cattle or some chicken in, inside the intestine, they don't do any diseases or harm to the host animal. But when with the people consume their uh, product, uh, big product or some egg product, we consume with the contamination of this pathogenic organism, we seriously, we people are the seriously ill. So these types of um, the genetic, uh, this, this, these are the genetic diseases. So here, I would like to uh, show you how uh, Campylovector and uh, uh, Salmonella species uh, transmitted from the, uh, from the uh, host animal to the, uh, through the environment like food, water, and wild animals and, and, and to the, uh, to the uh, public health. So this is the slide. Then here uh, we would find here that uh, the salmonella, salmonella is least in many animals. You can live in many like a, a cattle uh, and uh, some uh, duck, some uh, others, uh, others animal. Uh, when uh, co common cause of these are the common causes of foodborne diseases. When food is contaminated, uh, when preparing or uh, when cooking or insufficient cooking or when we keep in our refrigerator with the cooked and uncooked uh, food in the same uh, chamber, then it may be contaminated. So this is the uh, Campylobacteriosis in human. I mean, uh, how Campylobacter uh, 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 come to the human? When 
the complementary uh, mainly the faulty meat uh, and faulty product uh, complement you know uh, complementary species are the uh, commensal organisms in the host animal like uh, faulty uh, chicken and others uh, others other animal when uh, these types of uh, uh, these types of animal uh, uh, meat uh, uh, and their product is contaminated uh, with this complementary uh, zone is come to, through the food or water and when uh, we uh, we uh, we just uh, uh, we people are consume that uh, uh, contaminated faulty meat and other products then we we got sick and uh, we got sick ill illness and due to the, this when the species of the ill person species uh, uh, come to the environment like uh, this antibiotic uh, uh, infection of wild and uh, domesticated animals going uh, transmission uh, to the uh, public health so here i would like to show how transmission of drug resistant because my talk is multi drug resistance uh, related so you know when using a drugs for growth or promoting also for, for, for the treatment we we in, we use uh, in the uh, poultry feeds and other feeds uh, some uh, some antibiotics nowadays when these antibiotics uh, containing feeds are uh, feeded to the uh, animal uh, this uh, this types of uh, this types of antibiotic is also uh, contaminated the um, uh, poultry meats and other meats use it fertilizer and contaminated water to animal feces who is containing drug resistant pathogens uh, or vegetables farm this come to the uh, inappropriate drug consumption without doctor prescription transmission of resistant bacteria to human by animal products such as bean meat and faulty uh, faulty products is spread of resistant bacteria to family members after back home humans get resistant bacteria by eating contaminated food crops and uh, and remain in their gut then drug therapy appearance of the resistant bacteria come to the uh, patient uh, patient abdomen and in the gut system and through this uh, this transfer to the uh, hospital this uh, like a, uh, when this patient come to the hospital and it is spread to the hospital environment like nosocomial diseases uh, also these are the part of oils how um, anti um, uh, drug resistance can transfer uh, from the animal level to the public health so i would like to show you the, the very important uh, farming uh, the findings of my research is is no uh, in the farming system uh, in bangladesh is very unhygienic when uh, people also uh, for more benefit uh, uh, people uh, harvesting um, uh, their, uh, their their faulty uh, on the uh, on the water of the pond as a result um, they feed the only they, they only feed the animal and uh, and the cattle but uh, their feces is dropped to the pond water that feces is eaten by the fish and so fish are contaminated it the when we uh, use that fish from that pond then uh, we public are uh, getting uh, contaminated or getting infected that types of pathogenic organisms along with their antimicrobial resistant marker this is another unhygienic environment leads to zoonotic uh, foodborne illness when i have uh, shown this types of presentation in usa some uh, um, uh, some fd authorities suggested me uh, to inform to uh, make the, uh, the the how to say the awareness to bangladesh people uh, to cultivate their um, poultry as a hygienic condition also i have uh, i would like to um, inform here is we have a uh, four or five uh, um, tv tv media here please try to uh, focus on this types of unhygienic poultry uh, harvesting due to protect our people you know uh, we are taking uh, faulty meat from the market we are taking fish from the market but we don't know this faulty uh, fish faulty or fish is harvesting this or cultivating this way so we have to make awareness i would like to uh, request our uh, journalist to make some uh, comments uh, on their uh, media and this is also you, you could find here some droppings uh, droppings of uh, uh, some uh, faulty is here and this uh, drop to the uh, water you know this is the fish here the fish fishes are waiting to get the feces or droppings from that 
uh, faulty for their uh, for their eating purpose you could find here so these types of uh, faulty um, uh, faulty dropping is used as a fish food contributes to a spread of drug resistant into environment poor personal environmental hygiene practice in the farm you could find here these types of personal hygiene uh, uh, the, the farming people they ha don't have any gloves they don't have any, any shoe uh, and also not clothing uh, properly we could find here around dhaka city so uh, here we have the our um, uh, uh, public figure mr mukit bozumdar babu also here sir please you are you are working for the environment so how uh, unhygienically bangladesh people are harvesting their faulty please, please uh, uh, write some comment uh, regarding this Slaughtering practice you find here uh, is very unhygienic. And after slaughtering, the you know in the uh, in the poultry in the second uh, get to interest track there are lots of uh, Campylobacter jejuni and others Salmonella and others um, uh, pathogenic organism living in their alimentary tract. When they um, slaughter, these organisms come out uh, to the environment, and you could find here uh, they, 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 these are the, their intestinal intestine, and these are the uh, faulty products. So how close that? So it's a very very common and very easy way to transfer uh, pathogenic bacteria from this uh, intestinal product of the uh, faulty to the uh, faulty meat. And here we could also find that the um, uh, sir also shows that his um, uh, my respected uh, teacher uh, professor Anurashan also shows that there are some evidence that he could find uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, genetic material observed on the currency. So here I also would like to uh, are, I'd like to mention that you know uh, this is the money money transferring system. You know. From, uh, from uh, the, he, the, the gentleman buy some uh, faulty uh, faulty from a slaughterhouse, faulty slaughterhouse, and he given his money. And with the contaminated hand, the shopkeeper um, uh, exchanging money with him. As a result, the the pathogenic bacteria come to the currency. So this is the root cause of uh, pathogenic bacteria transfer um, uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, contaminated hands to the gentle people. And here you could find that it's very common practice. It is very common practice in Bangladesh. Uh, we are eating egg. Basically, in the winter season, it's very fast. Once upon a time, I was when I was a university student, I also used to eat these types of boiled egg from the roadside. So you know, here, uh, all, all those uh, eggs are not boiled. The, these are the raw, raw. Uh, these are the raw uh, eggs, and these are the boiled eggs. Very closely here. So, and the same hand is using handling the raw egg and the boiled egg, and the feel the uh, shell of the boiled egg also the same hand. So it's very common to transfer um, uh, pathogenic bacteria like Salmonella uh, to the uh, to the egg when filled about the using we are ready to use egg so boiled egg are filled and served with tips of salt and here we could find the the, uh, the uh, slide raw and boiled eggs are kept in close proximity which are handled with the same hand and thus causes first contamination so these are the root of OA how bacteria with multi resistant um, uh, come to our public health so uh, this is the methodology of my sample analysis. I have collected a sample, and after collection, I have incubated a, um, in the calcium media. Uh, and after incubation, I have observed the data. And using some uh, biochemical tests, I have confirmed the bacteria, um, uh, bacteria like uh, Salmonella uh, or, or, or Campylobacter. After getting the biotyping, I have uh, produced the uh, I have uh, produced the dendrograph. And this dendrograph show, showed that uh, Salmonella from the uh, from the meat sample uh, uh, with the uh, human clinical sample are very very close. And uh, this dendrogram for the Salmonella from the egg sample to the uh, clinical human clinical sample are very close. This dendrogram show that sample vector from the uh, poultry meat sample to the human clinic sample is very close. And this dendrogram shows that 
Malabakta from the egg sample uh, to the uh, to the uh, clinical human clinical sample is very close. So and then after getting the bacteria, the pathogenic bacteria Salmonella or Campylobacter zezone, I have taken the anti anti antibiotic sensitivity tested uh, use, using this diffusion method. And after getting the data, um, actually we are using here some forecasting uh, forecasting result here. Uh, we are getting the data till uh, 2015 to the 2019 and 2020 and the 2021 our forecasting uh, data so these are the antibiotic we use here and uh, you know when one organism is um, uh, resistant to the five or more than five antibiotic that organism is called a uh, multi drug resistant organism so uh, you know here uh, at the uh, uh, 2015 2016 2017 2018 and uh, uh, and the end of the 2019 we could find that uh, multi drug resistance with five five drug resistance is uh, higher than seven or eight drug but what we could find after the uh, uh, at the middle of the 2019 the multi drug resistant with eight drugs, uh, with eight drugs is increased than five, uh, five drugs. So, what would be the scenario after five years? We don't have any uh, antibiotic if we could not um, we could not uh, uh, discover new generation antibiotic. Otherwise, it will be completely impossible for us to treat these types of foodborne infection. This is the same for the a total of 8,100 positive samples um, uh, 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 out of uh, 55, 53.3 percent out of 600 clinical samples for Salmonella identified, identified observed here. While a case of Campylobacter species, uh, uh, 864 positive samples um, uh, we have tested here, it was seen that. Uh, 20 percent, 20.5 percent in economy to 65.57 nalexylic acid uh, uh, sample, uh, salmonella species are resistant uh, to the antibiotic used against them. While it was seen that 15.6 percent of erythromycin to the 99, 92.36 percent of the salmonella of the Campylobacter species strain are resistant uh, and uh, against the antibiotic used them. It is increase of multi drug resistant. 30.94% uh, salmonella isolate are, are multi drug resistant, and 16.67% uh, of the Campylobacter are multi drug resistant. By the year uh, 2021, nalexylic acid will be 100% resistant according to the forecasting data for salmonella isolate. In case of Campylobacter, nalexylic acid and ciprofloxacin will be 100% resistant by the end of the year 2021. Oh. Attribute of exposure yeah. and the cases reveal that infection caused by the Campylobacter species and the salmonella species are related to the cross-contamination serving half-done food. Campylobacter species in meat showed highest probability of illness if present in poultry. Presence of zoonotic isolates, which are drug resistant in a, a very concerning matter for public health, will probability of illness. In conclusion, I can say there are many sources of contamination, such as poor quality, water quality, transmission from the improperly sanitized equipped, uh, equipment, and people handling uh, pr uh, produce during processing or improper handling or washing procedure. Proper personal environmental hygiene should be maintained in the food production area. Particular attention should be paid to the uh, prevention of cross contamination between raw and ready to eat foods. Implementation of good hygiene practice, implementation of good manufacturing practice at all stages in the food chain at farm level, slaughterhouse, manufacturing, processing, catering, detail, etc. Implementation of food safety management system based on the principle of hazard analysis, critical control point. Hazard. This includes good process control, is it temperature control during cooking, storage testing against microbiological criteria as appropriate. 
I would like to acknowledge owner of the BMA Faulty Farm near Dhaka City, head of the Microbiology Laboratory, Square Hospital, graduate student, and uh, lab personnel of my Department of Microbiology here in Primary University. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. From your presentation, we got to know the hygienic environment of zoonotic areas should be maintained to disease, to decrease the spread of animal-borne illness. And it was also very informative. Thanks again, sir. At this point, I would like to request Ms. Anika Nawar Fatema, Lecture Department of Microbiology, to say something about Department of Microbiology, Primacia University. Assalamualaikum and a good, very good morning to everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. I will be presenting a presentation on our university, Primatia, and our Department of Microbiology. Uh, my name is Anika Noor Fatima. I'm a lecturer of Microbiology Department, Primatia University. So, with a, so without any further ado, let's begin. I welcome everyone to the first international e-conference on microbiology, COVID-19, and current issues from the Department of Microbiology, Primatia University. Primatia University is one of the leading private universities in Bangladesh with a student-centered, community-engaged, comprehensive research wings, distinguished by exceptional strength in science, technology, and business. Primatia University's role in channelizing the human resources in education and services has become exemplary. Since its inception in 2003, the university's growth has been phenomenal due to such continuous efforts of improving the teaching learning environment by taking various measures. Our board of trustees, we have our chairperson, Mohammad Nozrul Islam, our vice chairman, K.M. Khalid, and our vice chairman, Mohammad Raihan Azar. In our academic council member, we have our professor, Dr. Engineer Mohammad Humayun Kabir. He is the vice chancellor acting of Primatia University. And we also have professor, Dr. Ifrat Jahan, treasurer of Primatia University. Primatia University has both these campuses. We have the Star Tower, the HBR Tower, and the textile building. Department of Microbiology, Primatia University. As we all know, microbiology is emerging as the key biological science. The Department of Microbiology started its journey from the inception of Primatia University in 2003 as a core subject. The department offers a four-year Bachelor of Science BS program in microbiology at the undergraduate level. It also offers a one-year master's of science MS course in microbiology. Our department chair is Professor Dr. Shubhomoy Dotto. He is the Dean of the School of Science and the chairman to the Department of Microbiology. Professor Doctor has completed his postdoctorate from Hormel Medical Research Institute, University of Minnesota, USA. He has completed his PhD from University of Tokyo, Japan. Hello, Anika Nawar, we can't hear you. Are you with us? Are you still presenting your uh, words? Hello? Hello? Yeah. 
Hello? We can't hear anything. Your net, net is disturbing, maybe. Hello? Miss Anika Nawar Fatima, are you with us? Sorry for the inconvenience occurred. One minute. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for the inconvenience occurred. Sorry, we, we have to wait for one, one minute, minute because the problem is being solved. Please, please wait till then. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. We are trying to reconnect her. Please wait. Thank you for your patience. We are really sorry for the inconvenience. Please wait. We are really sorry that it's taking time to connect her because uh, our technology difficulties, uh, technical difficulties are going on. Uh, so please uh, be patient and be with us. We are really having a great time and thank you for your time that you everybody joined with us. And uh, it's really a very um, great speech from different speakers that uh, now they try to uh, inspire us to uh, get involved with these uh, opportunities and the re this research. Uh, uh, and uh, we are really trying our best to uh, be with this team. And please help us to be um, motivated. And uh, your inspiration is our guideline. Thank you. Please stay connected. We will be get back to you very soon.
actually the pro problem is going to be solved uh, it's a one second this problem is going to be solved okay sir thank you we are waiting sir we are waiting sir so actually uh, some uh, technical problem is not in our hand actually we are suffering from coronavirus pandemic from 2020 20 to 2021 20, COVID-19 affects different people in different ways. Most infected people will develop mild to moderate illness and recover without hospitalization. Most common symptoms of coronavirus is fever, dry cough, tiredness. Less common symptoms are ages, uh, pains, short throat, diarrhea, conjunctivities, headache, loss of taste or smell, a rash on skin or discoloration of fingers or toes. Uh, these are the symptoms, and if we find any symptoms, it is declared that uh, from the government that we have to go to a uh, hospital for uh, checkup, and if it is uh, positive, then we have to uh, get isolated for uh, 15 days. And uh, coronavirus, we are suffering from coronavirus, and today's, uh, today's uh, conference is uh, on uh, coronavirus COVID-19. Actually, we are suffering uh, from internet problem now. And please, please be Good, Good yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Back again. Back again. We had a, yeah, I am back again. I'm extremely sorry. We had a bit of a technical difficulty. Um, I guess some internet glitch. So let's continue with the presentation. We are already losing a lot of time, it seems. It's okay. Continue. Right. Thank you. All right. So like a second. So we will start from where we had left. That one you finished. Yes. Okay. So we were introducing our faculty members. We have Dr. Kumkum Rahman Mori. Our then we have Kanis Fatima, Assistant Professor, Dr. Muhammad Asatul Zaman Shishi, Assistant Professor, and Dr. Fahmida Alam, Assistant Professor in Microbiology. Then we have our team of lecturers: Savera Saima. Lecturer in Microbiology, Genia Afros, Maruf Obuni, myself, Anika Nawar Fatima, Muhammad Abu Ziyad, Sanjida Sharmi, Oshin Priti Lata Chakraborty, Nusrat Nabila Fariha, Saida Benazir, Monica Sultana, Ishrat Dilruba Mishu. These are the faculty members of the Department of Microbiology. Now we will talk a little about the research and research groups. Our first research group is led by none other than the Dean of the School of Science and the Chairman of Department of University, Professor Dr. Shuvamoy Dotto. His research on bacterial genetics, diarrheal drug development from the University of Tokyo, Japan in 2006. He has completed his postdoctoral research on biotechnology. In his ongoing research, among many of his, one of them is uropathogenic analysis and commonly used drug sensitive patterns of the pathogens in tract infection in obstetric patients attending an urban hospital in Dhaka, Bangladesh. The molecular microbiology would be Maruf Abani, myself, Anika Nawar Fatima, and Oshin Ghurni. Group members would be Busha Uljanna, Abu Ziha, he has been as a preliminary speaker in 2019 at the Applied Microbiology Conference USA. He
Sorry. I think we have a lot of people cutting us. That's why we are having a bit of a problem. All right. Our second group is of research is led by. <laughs> Professor Dotto has been invited as a plenary speaker in 2019 in the applied micro has also been honored as invited as a plenary speaker in 2018 at the MESMAC. He has also attended at the Safe Science Conference over 65 students and in the research as multi-drug resistance in pathogenic bacteria, epidemiology, Professor Dotto has supervised over 65 students and has researched in many fields like multi He has been awarded with a Young Scientist Award by CHRO in has been honored with the European Medical Society from CHRO in 2007, Netherlands. He has also been bestowed with the honor of Japanese government Wusho Scholarship in 2006. And finally, he has been awarded with the Best Volunteer Award in 2004 uh, from the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation, Japan. Two journals in international journals, eight over national journals have submitted numerous abstracts in conferences over 28, and these are many listed. Our second research group completed her PhD in biology from Kumamoto University, Japan. She has also completed her master's and bachelor's in microbiology from University of Dhaka. Of her publication. Moving on, research group, we have Kanis Fatiman, assistant professor of the department. Her ongoing researches, among her ongoing researches, the isolation and molecular characterization of pectin. Kind of Dr. Kanis Sattama would be Priti Lata Chakrati, Saida Benazir, and Pamida Sultana. We have our, another group led by Zaman Shishi. His research interests would be biopesticide, probiotic, plant growth promoters, and algae biofuel. Be Nusrat Nabila Fariha, Sanjita Shah, and Ori. Last but not the least, we have Dr. Famida Alam, Assistant Professor. She's completed her PhD in Molecular Genetics from University Saints, Malaysia, Malaysia. She has also been an editorial board member in 2020 on evidence based complementary and alternative medicine. Her group members would be Abir Hossein, Sharmin Akhtar, Munira Juthi. These are one of her few publications. 
among the list of many. Thank you, thank you very much everyone for being with us. Extremely sorry for the technical difficulties. I hope you all have an evening and a great program. Thank you, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum, goodbye. Thank you, Anika Nawar, for your fantabulous presentation where you described in details about the Department of Microbiology, Primary University, and it's really nice to get introduced with the members of Board of Trustees, along with all the faculty members of Microbiology Department. I want to thank our foreign participators for your valuable time and patience. Thanks everyone for being with us. This is the end of our inauguration ceremony and now you are requested to join the link given for the plenary session. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, join uh, Professor Selena Parvin uh, to your next uh, plenary session one. Selena Parvin is here. Please join uh, your, your session, plenary one. We have okay. given the links to you. Selena Parvin is uh, here, Professor Selena Parvin. Professor Sunil, Selena Parvin, are you here? Can you hear us? Professor Selena Parvin. From Maryland University, USA. Maryland University from USA. Are you here? I could find your name. Maybe technical difficulties, sir. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So include our this session, inauguration session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, our uh, participant from the 26 country, 168 participant. And thank you very much, the media uh, journalist joined with us. I could find uh, ATN Bangla, uh, Masranga TV, Channel I, Bang uh, BTV, and uh, Gazi TV. Thank you very much. Uh, please cover our uh, program to your television channel. Thank you very much. Thank you.